Hello, people. I wanted to do a little video about the heavenly octahedron in the middle of the concave Earth. And what I did actually is I went back to the Canadian Meteor Orbit Radar, Seymour, and what they they totally, totally, totally missed it. They think uh, this image that they're producing with their radar imagery is uh, indicative of sporadic meteoroids okay it's quite plain to see this is just it's radar imagery of the octahedron in the middle of the concave earth along with the celestial sphere and then it has these hot points there's one at the top here and then there's one at the sides um, they call this one the helion and the antihelion and this one the toroidal um, but what they did is actually they went through the different they went through the whole year so you have the fifth day of the year, the 15th day of the year, all the way up to the 355th day of the year, meaning that 365, well, I'm not sure why I don't, they don't have 365, but I guess they went by fives. So what I did was I brought it in the Photoshop, and I did a little animated, animated GIF of it. I'll play that for you right now. Play... There we go. Now look what we have here. You see the north apex of the octahedron pretty much stays uh, visible throughout the whole year. However, the south one only becomes visible during part of the year, i.e. When, so when the sun goes south in the wintertime. And so we're getting a... Well, we're getting a, uh, a preference of warmth or activity more in the northern side, on the northern side. So this is really why the northern hemisphere is warmer than the southern hemisphere, because it not only has the sun, which is orbiting cylindrically around the celestial sphere yearly, but it also has the north side of the octahedron, the Bible calls it the sides of the north in the book of Isaiah 14 and Psalm 48, I believe. Uh, so the sides of the north, the top of the north apex side of the octahedron stays lit or stays warm throughout the entire year. And that's also why I believe we're seeing these hot spots here at the top, because I believe that the north side is emanating this this magnetism, this heat, this light, the father of lights is behind the celestial sphere at the top, the sides of the north. And that is why the northern hemisphere has more land, it's warmer, and I believe all, and also in order to compensate, um, to kind of just even out a little bit, what I, what God originally did was um, he allowed the uh, the sun to get closer to the earth in the southern hemisphere. I'll get my concave earth analemma video. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Analemma, concave earth. There it is. So, I'll fast forward over here. To this part where we see the analemma and the sun is getting closer in the southern hemisphere in order to kind of counterbalance the heat so it doesn't get too cold too frigid as far as my animation there you see the sun is closer to the earth in the south and further away from the earth because the sun i mean the earth already has the warmth of the northern side of the octahedron pretty much throughout the whole year so that's why we have a, you know, we can we can see that the sun is actually a little bit bigger in the sky with its angular diameter like that. And so that is why, if you watch uh, this guy, Airscript Dubay, uh, he misapplies the reason why it's warmer in the in the north than it is in the south. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny the way he just talks about this. Um, I think he's intentionally lying. He's also using uh, NLP hypnotism. 
Just look at 7 this. 7.29 a.m. Just look at this. He goes for a whole three minutes of just revolving. He wants he wants to hypnotize you. And he's using his his mono, monotone voice here. And look look at that. Of their differences, <laughs> stating the range of temperature is limited. There being no excess of either. It's all from a script. Heat or cold. Look at that. Compared with the climate. Listen to me. Be hypnotized. Just keep watching this. <laughs> look at all the fools too. They get too far. And he's also talking about the times of the day in New Zealand, which is, uh, which he says is negative 42 degrees latitude, versus England, which is 52 degrees latitude. And he's comparing two different, two, two completely different latitudes. Uh, they're conjugates. See, what you really need to do, if you compare negative 42 degrees to positive 42, it's virtually the same. He's, compa he's comparing apples to oranges, and all these people are just being duped by him. Air script dubé. See, I already calc calculated this out. So, like, negative 42 degrees south... He's saying the longest day is 15 hours and 15 minutes. Actually, I calculated it out. It's a little bit different than what he says. I went over here and I just quickly calculated that out. And then, uh, so that's negative 42 degrees south. And then positive 42, it's virtually the same. 15 hours, 15 minutes. 15 hours, 15 minutes, the same. The shortest day of the year on December 21st, actually um, June 21st in the south, uh, it's going to be nine hours and seven minutes. <clears throat> oh, looky here, nine hours and seven minutes—the same. <laughs> so you got to compare apples to apples, dude. Uh, so even like this, 52 degrees north, which is in England, the longest day of the year in the summer, 16 hours 30, 39 minutes, and compare that to somewhere 52 de 52 degrees south you get a very close approximation, 16 hours and 44 minutes, just five minutes off. So there's nothing there, even you know, on the shortest day of the year, seven hours and 50 versus seven hours and 45, five, five minute difference. So uh, please people, be smarter than that. You, you really wanna be hypnotized by this bullshit? You know, this is, this, is, this is intentional. He's going out of her, Two minutes with this, just, you know, this animation circling, 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 and you're listening to his hypnotic voice. Did not shine as brilliantly as it does in England. As he's reading off a script. The finest day. In yeah, I don't do scripting, sorry. I just, this is all impromptu. Eight minutes. On the summer solstice. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to manipulate you like that. So going back here, this is uh, groundbreaking. I mean, uh... It's showing you right there an animation of what's really going on in the concave earth. Play that again. It's pretty wild. Look at that. Sum summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. Now, the reason I believe that we're seeing more concentrated areas at the equator, well, for one, that's where we have the Magne magnetic equilibrium happening, but also too because of the way when you view the celestial sphere, you know, perspective wise, if you just take like a, a ring of equidistant points around the equator, when you look straight on like that, you're going to you're gonna see more behind each other on the side. So you're going to get more of a more activity on the right and left. So that's why that is happening. So yeah, there you go. Thank you, Seymour, for inadvertently showing us the, uh, the celestial sphere, the octahedron in the middle of the concave Earth. And, and they totally misapply it to sporadic meteoroids, which is not what is happening here. They're actually showing the activity, the activity in heaven, right in the middle of the Earth. That's pretty wild stuff there. So, yeah, concave Earth reality, it's the only option to the shape of the Earth. Everything works, or the planets work, nothing works. Nothing works on a flat Earth. It doesn't work, guys, it's a PSYOP. The analemma works like that. All right.
I'll put some links in the bottom for you guys. Thanks for watching.